So do you think then that I'm going back to the environmentalists because sure. uh, some mm -hmm. of them are uh, of some stature, and I think that their arguments are pretty persuasive to to many people. And are they not aware of these situations, or are they because they're certainly they're harmful to the environment, or are they among those who you say are willing to say it's worth the risk because global warming is worse? Because of the There's certainly climate. risks in global warming that we shouldn't discount at all, and we need to find ways to generate electricity, which is all that a nuclear power plant does, is, is it generates electricity, and, well, and it produces nuclear waste. But there is a need to meet expected energy demand well into the future, and how you do this, how do we provide the amount of electricity that you know, the future economy will demand is a legitimate question. The question is how does society make those decisions to invest, say, in nuclear power? Environmentalists who look at nuclear power and see some sort of a panacea for the issue of global warming, I don't think have really looked at the numbers because the MIT study itself shows that you may need as many as a thousand nuclear power plants to have a significant impact on global warming. If we build a thousand nuclear power plants just in the United States to try to mitigate carbon output and, and solve the global warming problem, we're also talking about building a nuclear waste disposal facility of the size of Yucca Mountain every two or three years and all of the attendant transportation that goes along with getting the waste to that. Well, the other thing about that it. is that when you consider all the inputs to nuclear power, you have mining, milling, conversion, uh, and enrichment, reconversion, uh, fabrication, all these things that I mentioned earlier, plus all the waste uh, you know, dealings that you have later on. The net energy gain from nuclear power is probably in the negative. And almost all those inputs are fossil fuels. So when you're building a nuclear plant and operating it, essentially, you are building all this fossil fuel production just to build the plant to and to support each one of the fuel steps. I looked at a report to the United Nations that said that, in essence, uh, the power put out by a nuclear power plant uh, produces, the really, by the time you look at the life cycle, uh, mm -hmm. the same kind of uh, carbon emissions as a, a plant that burns natural gas. Right. So that really isn't a, 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 you know, a wonderful thing. You know, one of the real problems here is that it, 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 we never like to talk about what can really go wrong, but things do go wrong. and. Where we're, uh, none of these other options, including solar, renewables, all these other technologies that need to be subsidized like nuclear, uh, they don't have everybody dies as part <laughs> of the big scenario, or everyone has this terrible economic impact. A study, uh, the Interstate 40 across the northern part of the state is a route for radioactive waste now. Um, and a worst case scenario of something going to Yucca Mountain, for example, would be more than a year before that road could be reopened. It would devastate the economy of northern Arizona, much less all the other disruptions. Um, and it's, it's a strange thing to even suggest that we should uh, put this risk on everybody else, that someday you may not be able to go home ever because someone had a mistake. Uh, and also, I think it's very illuminating and very telling. Here in the state where we have this large nuclear power plant, we have absolutely no emergency response capability in the state for that kind of issue. Uh, they'll basically secure the area, then bring in the feds, you know, the same people who came to Katrina. Okay, let's go back to the disposal of the waste a little sure. bit. And um, as I understand it, without some major solution to the waste problem, nuclear power can't even move forward in the United States. Yeah. Um, can, you, can we talk a little more about the waste and why it is such a problem? I don't know if people understand how long what the, what the half-life is and, and all of this. So can we talk about that? Uh, I could address it a little bit. When you first remove the irradiated nuclear fuel because it no longer produces the capacity of heat that the plant requires for its continued you know, production of electricity, when you take that fuel out, it is many times more radioactive than when it first went into the plant. In addition, it's thermally hot, so hot that they need to keep it in large swimming pools on site of a nuclear mm -hmm. power plant for at least two to four years until the temperature of those fuel rods thermally has cooled enough that they can be handled outside of the water bath. This is not even to speak of the residual radiation. The question of what to do with that fuel 
then. Now, the policy in the United States is to just simply take that fuel, pack it up into casks, and dispose it inside of a mountain in Nevada. Now, the mountain in Nevada has not been certified to meet sort of EPA expectations of containment over a multi-epochal length of time. Thousands of years is what the EPA is projecting. Mind you, there's not been a government in the history of the world that has survived more than a few hundred years, let alone a democratic government. And so the prospect of predicting geological stability when we don't even understand political stability on those kind of time frames is boggling to my mind. Yet this is what would be required to dispose of this really hot waste. Well, the solution that the nuclear proponents have is to recycle the nuclear waste and extract from it the cleaner aspects of the fuel that then we could reuse or perhaps burn in a different type of reactor that burns plutonium and create a whole new economy of recycling the nuclear fuel without regard, of course, when they make this argument for recycling, that that process itself produces even more waste per kilowatt hour of electricity that you gain. So any way you look at it, we're producing mountains of waste, although the industry will define it as mere, you know, file cabinets full of waste because they want to only look at the individual, you know, atoms that are radioactive and not everything around that has been irradiated trying to contain that radioactivity throughout the life of the nuclear power plant. So all of this material is irradiated and all of it must eventually be you know, managed to keep that radiation isolated from the human environment forever. And is this the social risk that we really want to take with capital investments now in energy production? And I might point out that if you put that kind of money into nuclear power, you really won't have the money to do anything else. So it's, it's an all or nothing. Opportunity. Now, very well, and, and if you put the same kind of money into renewables and solar and things like that, you would get a lot more bang for the buck and no one's going to die from it. Mm. <laughs> Every yeah. time the, the, the worldwide capacity for, gener for creating uh, uh, solar panels doubles, the price drops by 20%. So if we would subsidize that, we would get a lot further, mm -hmm. you know, for example. The other thing I want to point out is we have this fear of terrorism and dirty bombs, and this would, in essence, put this enormous smorgasbord of radioactive waste on the highways mm for someone to attack. And that does, doesn't seem like a very good idea. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk first about uh, nuclear weapons proliferation, and then we'll go on to the terrorist attacks. Um, it is well known that any government that wants to build nuclear weapons first st almost always starts by building a nuclear power plant. Now, why is that? Is it not possible to build them any other way? That's the quickest route mm -hmm. to getting the concentration of the particular isotope of uranium that makes a weapon. The quickest route to get that concentration or to get the alternative to the enriched uranium, which is plutonium. The quickest route is in a reactor, to produce it in a nuclear power reactor, and then through this process like recycling, extracting that element, plutonium or the enriched uranium, from the spent fuel. Uh, particularly plutonium when we're talking plutonium. The other route is the enriched uranium route to a bomb. There's basically those two routes for your, like, your material that makes the bomb work. In, in this case, recycling isn't a good program. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. This is, this is not what we, what we want to recycle. So really, that is, that is the route. Because you also need the industrial infrastructure and the technological expertise that a nuclear power program provides before you can begin to move on to the more esoteric job of designing and building a nuclear weapon. 